Hi, my name is Dan Curtis. I'm here with Harry Dent. He is the founder of HS Dent and editor of the HS Dent Forecast. He's also the founder of Dent Research. Harry, how are you? Good, Dan. Uh, you know, Harry, I, I've got a couple questions for you. I'd like to start with some predictions. You know, after the last jobs report, uh, the Fed is raising interest rates. Uh, the market just had its worst year since, or worst half year, I should say, since the Nixon administration. Where do we go from here? Well, you know, Dan, I've been warning about this for a long time. We, the, the baby boom peaked in their entire spending cycle back in 2007. And so we had the great crash and recession of 2008 into 2009. And, and the central bank just went haywire. I mean, they just started printing zap, uh, tons of money. They didn't let that recession do its work, okay, and work out the excesses and the zombie companies and the bad debts. So we're carrying all this into the future with endless stimulus. And then COVID hits and they go haywire even more. $10 trillion, Dan, fiscal and, and, and monetary combined, about half and half, $10 trillion in two years to stimulate an economy just because of COVID, which is a short-term uh, challenge anyway. So, so now we've got, they have to tighten now. And, and what, what people don't realize, they've been keeping this economy going now for 13 years, purely on stimulus. Because the baby boomers are done in the millennials, which I project very clearly in the future, a boom for like maybe late 2024 into 37. Okay, that's but but in between we've got this weak fundamental economy driven by stimulus, and now they've gone so far they they have to tighten and work against themselves. And I think this tightening is not going to be taken well by the economy. And by early next year, we're going to see another wave of stocks down, just like we saw or more. We are I call it the first wave crash. We're in that rebounce and we're just coming into the third wave now. We're just making new lows and a lot of stuff. So that's a bad sign. I think we, we have another big wave down into uh, late this year, early next year bounce. And then we have another big wave down into late next year, early 2024. This will be what I've been saying, the crash of our lifetime. It won't be quite 29 to 32, but it'll be more like 29 to 32 than it was 74 to 75 or 2000 to 2002. And it'll be like, I call it 2008 downturn and recession times 1.5. That's, that's my rule. This is going to be 50% worse. Stock's going to go down 86% instead of 57 and, and, you know, on and on and on. You know, we're going to get 15% unemployment instead of 10 or 11. So that's what look at. Whatever you thought 2008 and 9 was for your business or investments, this should be about 50% worse, which means get out of the way, especially in investments. Is sobering, sobering thought. You know, I hear you talk a lot about waves. Uh, do you think we've reached that third wave? Can you can you describe a little bit about what you're talking about when you when you refer to it as waves? Yeah, in a major bull or bear market. In other words, the direction you're going. And now we're in a bear market, from my point of view. So the waves ought to be five waves up in a bull market, as we saw 87, 2000, 2000, you know, that sort of thing, 2021. Now this is we're in the in in a five wave sequence down. We saw the first wave bottom in June. Okay, we bounced since then, and now we're coming out of that bounce. We're coming. We're in the third wave from my point of view, just breaking below the first wave in the Nasdaq and most of the major indices in the S and P. And this third wave should be at least as strong as the first one, and it should be stronger. You know, it's likely to be fifty to sixty percent worse. So we could see the worst of this downturn. Um, into early next year. It took five and a half months, that first wave, so it's probably going to take that or more for this one. Uh, first wave took down the NASDAQ 34%. This will probably take it down, you know, after a bounce down 55 to 60. Now, that's, that, that, Dan, is when people are going to know, uh-oh, this is no longer correction. Uh-oh, the central banks actually lost control. See, all I've been waiting on, Dan, for years is the central banks to lose control because all they've been doing is printing money. You don't solve any real problems with short-term cures, like just printing money out of thin air. You have to restructure, you got to cut back debts. You, you, know, you have to do real things businesses would do in a turnaround, same with the kind. So this has just been Pollyanna, and now it gets to the point where they overdid it. They uh, I think they have lost control. There's no way for the Fed, they can't turn around now and, and, and loosen aggressively after finally admit they have to tighten and after they over uh, responded, they're, they're stuck. Yeah, they I can't agree with you. Turn around quickly. And I think by the time they do turn around, this, this crash is going to go down enough that people will say, uh oh, no, we, we just, we thought, we thought that the, the central banks could control this. We thought the economy keep going up. People are going to get scared and then you can't turn them around. 
I agree with you. Now, I, I know you have spoken highly of uh, the bond market. Uh, is, is, do you see that as a safe haven? I mean, where, where does somebody go now? Yeah, you know, and, and that, that's the problem. You know, in booms, you can diversify in different countries and different economic sectors, you know, tech and consumer discretionary and, you know, Europe and U.S. and East Asia, you know, all this sort of stuff. In a downturn, it, it, very everything, what we have to see, there is nothing, including the magical gold that did not bubble. In fact, gold at the peak of its bubble not too long ago went up more than stocks did. So people saying buy gold is the same. Thing. That's one of the biggest bubbles, okay? So, so everything, financial assets have to reset. And then I'll give you the most important number in the world, Dan, $577 trillion going on, probably closer to 600 by now. That's all the financial assets in the world. And that normally is two, at most three times GDP. It's like six and a half times global GDP at 94 trillion. So this is a global bubble in everything. So, so, so bonds with any risk have to come down. Stocks anywhere in the world have to come down. Hey, they may die down 50% in Australia with better demographics and 86% here and 92% in the tech stock. That's my forecast, basically. Australian stock market, where I'm going next couple of weeks to lecture, down 59%, which will be the worst they've seen in decades, but it'll be better than almost anybody else. Real estate, it already went down 34%. We didn't even see that in the Great Depression because we didn't have a real estate bubble in roaring 20s. You couldn't borrow money easy enough to have a bubble in real estate that was crazy. Now we do have a global everything real estate everywhere. So I'm seeing real estate going down, what did I say? 1.5, 50% instead of 34%. Now that is painful. It's one thing stocks go down, stocks can bounce back pretty quickly. And, and people, most people don't have most of their net worth in stock. Most people do have the majority or a big part of their net worth in their home. It's all and real estate. People have vacation homes, and a lot of people have been speculating on real estate. This real estate crash, if it's 50%, and that's just going back to the 2012 lows. It's not going that far in history. We're not going back to 82 or 90 recession or anything. Just down to the recent lows. We came out of 2008, 9, but real estate took much longer to turn around. We didn't come out of real estate till 2012. We're going to just go back to those lows. That's 50%. That's how big a real estate bubble. Real estate doubled since then. So that's going to be the most painful thing for most people. Their house goes down and this time it doesn't go roaring back up to new highs. And how is this affecting the global markets? Uh, so uh, if, 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 you can't buy, if you can't buy bonds, you can't buy gold, can't buy real estate in the U.S. Where, where, where do you go? Well, it's a real estate, everything bubble, every stock market bubble. Like I said, I'm going to Australia and say, hey, your, your, your market is going to go down 50 to 59 <laughs> percent. That's going to look very good. You're, I mean, the U.K. and European market is going to go like down more like ours. Maybe not quite as much. We had a bigger stock bubble than anybody, but real estate bubbled everywhere. Australia. In, in New Zealand have an unbelievable real estate bubble. And the number one real estate bubble in the world is China. China stock market, okay, yeah. But everybody owns home. Poor people own sometimes two or three homes and one or two of them sitting empty in China. So China is going to get hit the hardest by this. Australia by being next to them. Um, the whole world's baby boom is turning down, except for Australia and New Zealand and Norway and Sweden, a few small countries. So this is a back to reality now that the baby boom and all the stimulus has gone as far. We go back down to reality. And that just means stocks go back down to early 2009 lows, real estate 2011, 2012 lows. And people say, well, oh, that's no big deal. No, it it's is a big deal. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the big short on the S&P, 92 percent, the Nasdaq and 50 percent and average real estate. 60 to 70 percent in upscale ritzy real estate. So this is going to be the biggest shock we have seen in our lifetime. Again, more like the early 30s, maybe not quite extreme. That was just a naked crash. They didn't do anything to stop it. No stimulus, anything, no cushioning. And it'll be the biggest. Our, our kids will not see a, a crash this big, I think, even when they grow up. Let's, and they're in their let's 40s. hope not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, changing gears on you, uh, Bitcoin, where where is that going? Is that the same uh, in the same boat as gold? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the, the first now we've had this is this. This is the second stock bubble It's the second in particular tech bubble with more extreme and the second real estate. bubble. we've never had double bubbles in any of this. 
Real estate never bubbles, crashes and bubbles again. So the first tech bubble peaked in May of 2000, okay? Guess what drove though? It was Amazon and the new dot-coms only from 97, late even in that surge, they came in the last three years and really bubbled it up and they crashed the most, okay? So the NASDAQ went down 58%, Amazon went down 95%, the dot-com internet index went down 94%. So that's what I see this time. It is the cryptocurrencies. Now, they're not part of, of the Nasdaq this time, except for a few, you know, a few Coinbase or a few people got on or something. So, so crypto is going, it's the bubble of the bubbles. It is the most extreme. Crypto has gone up. Bitcoin has gone up the most. Bitcoin, just to go back. Now, listen to this. I said, you know, 2012 for real estate, 2009 for stock. Just to go back to its late 2018 lows after the last crash. It's going to get a 95, 96%, just like Amazon, the dot com. So, crypto when is this going to happen? Bust the most. When, and when will this bottom out happen? I think actually that uh, Bitcoin may, may actually bottom, physically bottom on the next crash down ahead of stock. That'll be the third wave down with another fifth wave to follow. I think that might be the final bottom in Bitcoin, but then it goes more sideways and retest that bottom. You may see the worst in Bitcoin by early next year. And again, my prediction, just back <laughs> to the 2018 low, but that's $3,233 from 69,000. What is that? Guess what? Just like Amazon and the dot com, 95%. So you're, you're, you're the thinking- The biggest bubble, the biggest burst. So, so if you, and even even at twenty thousand here now, go to three. It's still so gonna be down another. You're thinking January is when we start to to bottom out on Bitcoin. Is, is that the same with commodities? That, that is. Oh. I think we could bottom in Bitcoin as early as early next year, and stocks as early as late next year. Now this all could go a little longer. I have on the outside mid to late 2024 for bottom in stocks because again, the, the central banks have pushed this out and out. Okay, natural cycles. Uh, we would be bottoming earlier. So, so the earliest for the stock market is late 2023. I'd say the earliest for Bitcoin is, is maybe early next year. And, and even after that, uh, I don't think it's going to make much progress. We, stocks don't come out of this till sometime well into 2024. And Bitcoin really won't come out of it strongly until just before that too. Normally, Bitcoin leads stocks by about seven weeks. So, so I'm just saying the Bitcoin though does did bubble the most, gets hit the worst. So it may actually technically bottom several months ahead of stocks, but it doesn't mean it's going to come running out of it. So, so hold on, basically, just to yeah find something. Well, well, I, I'm not holding on to anything. This, again, you hold through normal 10, 20 percent stock corrections. We've gotten them all through the boom, even occasionally a 50% crash, you know, like we had, you know, 40% in 87 or 50% in, in, in the early 2000s. But, but the markets come back to new highs quickly. The markets are not coming back to new highs for two reasons. The millennial doesn't even start their next boom until sometime in, in 2024. And will and take, you know, 15 years to build that. And the central banks, after more and more, more and more stimulus, for this thing to fall apart just two years after 10 trillion, 10 trillion, by the way, is 46% of GDP. You imagine explaining to your grandkids, well, our central bankers thought we should spend 46% of our GDP just to keep a tired boom going another couple of years. How does that sound, kids? Would you reelect those guys, huh? Yellen, you know, and, and Powell, you sure. know, and Bernanke sure. and all these guys, these guys, none of them ever had sex or run a business. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I hate to say it, but they're not even in the business world. <laughs> so, um, Janet so, Yellen so looks things. like she came out of a nunnery. I hate to say it, but it's true. Where'd she get that haircut? I mean, these <laughs> are the people that have been feeding this bubble the most. Everybody feeds it because we all like a bubble is something for nothing. Stocks and real estate. Real estate normally goes up with inflation rate. What's that today? One to two percent. Well, it goes up 10 to 20 percent a year recently. We're getting a free lunch. This lunch gets taken back when the central banks lose control or the bubble gets so stretched that it just blows. And anyway, a lot of the bubbles in history, including the 2000 bubble in tech stock, it, the, the recession came a year later. It wasn't the economy or recession that killed the bubble. The bubble killed the bubble. Stocks just got crazy and they finally fell apart. And then when the smart money starts selling, then everybody followed. Well, everything you say is is based on some sound reasoning. Uh, I, I will tell you, it's 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 doom and gloom. Is there anything you are optimistic about? 
Well, basically, yeah, I'm optimistic about buying the best stuff. I will actually, you get Bitcoin in that three to four or 5,000 range, I will buy Bitcoin. It may be an invisible coin, but it's got complex technology behind it. And it is blockchain. Somebody at my own conference, a speaker, Mark Youssef, explains that it's the digitization of all financial assets and money. The biggest number I had, I threw out earlier, 577 trillion in global financial assets. And it's probably already, that was a couple of years ago, last time I could tag that and put it all together. It's going to be, it's going to be 600 trillion by the time this bubble bursting. That's the biggest number in the world. If you can digitize that and make that much more efficient and easy to buy and sell and measure and stuff, that's the next wave. Well, and, I and think so, you've got so buying Bitcoin it already. So yeah, crypto is a big deal. It's just in its infancy, and it's hard to understand how an invisible coin could be worth sixty-nine thousand dollars. But I, my projections, and I'm just doing it with the dot coms, a similar wave that peaked in the last tech bubble, crashes 95, 90 percent, and Bitcoin ends up between a half a million and a million dollars a coin. Wow. And at that level, it would be worth well more than all the gold in the world. It would end up being the global standard for a new global digital system of money where that is the standard. Gold can't be the standard for a digital world growing at five, six percent. Gold supply is only growing at one and it won't even grow at that forever. Well, so and at half a million, it makes the uh, by Bitcoin. It I, makes the guys who are buying it at four thousand uh seem pretty smart, I guess. That'd be the first thing I'd buy. Now I want to diversify, but but again, why would I buy any stocks? Maybe better stocks will only be down 40% from here and others will be down 70 or 80 from here. Why would I buy any stocks? All stocks go down pretty much together. Um, and there might be a few you could find that won't, but I, I'm not gonna spend, waste my time looking for that. I got too much to do. So I'm, in, I'm into being only in, third, my best thing is TLT is 20 year average uh, treasury bonds, which you can buy easily, buy and sell easily. Z-Roz, Z-R-O-Z is 25 year average. That moves 50 to 60% more than TLT. So that's what, I would buy. It's a little less liquid, but it's still plenty liquid for everyday investors like me or anybody listening to this. Okay. That's where I have my money now. Okay. If this crash, the more this crashes, the, that's the safe haven. And you know what people say? Oh no, Harry, it's gold. And I got Peter Schiff right down the street from me in Puerto Rico. It's gold. It's gold. Gold went up in the early stages of the 2008 crash because people thought it would be the safe haven. When you know what hit the fan, gold went down 45, 50%. Hey, not as much as other commodities, not quite as much as stocks. Gold went down, okay? I buy gold a few years from now because the big, the fastest growing large country in the world is gonna be India, not China. China has way overexpanded. Their demographics have already peaked. No, the only emerging country that's had demographics already peaked. Nobody knows that. India will be the next big monster growth in Southeast Asia and South Asia and all of that. And they love gold. So I wouldn't mind buying some gold in my portfolio when it's down to 250, I mean, 900 to 1,000. That's my target for gold. I'd buy some, but gold's still not going to beat the best tech stocks or, yeah. or, or Indian stock market or Asian stock markets or you know the NASDAQ. But it's a good diversifier. But no, gold is not the safe haven. And I don't know how anybody can argue that when 2008 already proved the worse it got, gold finally caved in and ended up being down 45, 50%. What, again, you had to buy a bunch of commodities, it would have been the best. It still went down. Why would I have my money in gold until it hits that, until it goes back to its support right around a thousand bucks? Then I would buy some gold. As you a make some points. You make some sound points. Well, uh, I, I got to tell you, this is uh, it's always enlightening and it's always uh, uh, illuminating to talk to you. I, I uh, appreciate the uh, the fervor of your convictions. Um, and I and I know our audience will as well. Hey, Dan, um, real quick. People want more information. HarryDent.com. I have I have a paid newsletter, but I have a free newsletter. You get an article from my, me and my partner every week. You know, and 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 just to try us out, because I'm telling you, pe more people, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. No question about it. Mainstream economists don't even want to consider. They think they can keep them in control. People need to listen to this. So you can at least get on our free newsletter at harrydent.com. Well, and we encourage people to uh, go listen to your rants as well. I, I, I learn a lot from every, every time I listen to that. So. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, we appreciate the time, Harry. Uh, as always, it's... Um, 
it's a, a, a sober and illuminating, illuminating. So uh, th thanks very much. And we will uh, uh, catch back up soon, I hope. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Have a good day.